Hey, welcome back to the channel. I use an app called Notion to organize my life and I use it to reflect and set intention for the day. It helps me understand and retain and express information in new ways at work. And I'm even using it to power my personal website and blog, which helps me share my thoughts with the world. And this is just scratching the surface of all the ways Notion makes me superhuman. So in this video, I wanna share a few ways I use Notion to give me superpowers. Let's go. So what the first question is, why use Notion in the first place? And as a product manager, an Airbnb host, a health conscious guy, a keyboardist, just a friendly dude, I consume so much information during the day and my brain can't remember everything and trying to remember everything just leads to more and more stress as I get worried about the things that I'm forgetting. David Allen, who's this guru of getting things done, has this great quote about how your mind is meant for having ideas, not for holding them. And so I leverage technology as a way to augment the limitations of my physical body. And one way that I do so is by building what we call a digital second brain to organize information. There's a great book by Tiago Forte who's emerged as this thought leader in the area of personal knowledge management and he wrote a book about building a second brain which has this incredible framework for doing this but I'll give you my personal version and share how I apply it in my life. But I use a tool called Notion. So Notion is a workspace that in my mind combines three things. One, it's a great document editor. So you can think of this kind of like Google Docs, but it's better because it makes it really easy to create docs that are visually appealing and interactive. Two, it's an easy way to create what we call relational databases, which you can think of kind of like a Google Sheet, but it's better because it lets you relate and combine all these different sets of data in ways that helps you create systems, which lead to habits, which help me reach my goals in a better way. Three, it's an easy way to publish things to the web. So all this information that I'm capturing and organizing and distilling and expressing, I can share all that with the world in a really easy, seamless way. It's my hope that this takes off as a thing that humans do at scale, which as we're combining and synthesizing all this information, it helps us create super intelligence. But let's bring things back down to earth. Notion is completely free to use. They're not sponsoring this video. I'm not getting paid to say this. I just genuinely think this is the future. Okay, so we'll talk about three ways that I use Notion to live a better life. We'll start with number one, which is journaling. So every morning, my routine is to wake up, make coffee, and sit with my iPad at my kitchen table and write a daily journal entry. And I do this in Notion. I have a database of journal entries and can create a new one which loads my template. I like to write about four things. One, what did I dream about last night? I think our dreams are immensely powerful and have more meaning than we can understand today. If I can remember what I dreamt about the previous night, I try to write it down and reflect on what it might mean for my life. Next, I think of three things that I'm grateful for. Gratitude is a practice like lifting weights or running a mile. And I find that when I practice focusing on things that I'm thankful for, then I start to do so out of habit throughout the day. And that makes me a happier person. I focus on what I wanna get done today. I've started treating daily tasks like quests from a video game. So I start by writing down lots of side quests that I wanna complete. And these are super small things from getting up and taking a shower and getting dressed and making my bed and all those things. This helps me visualize the way that I want my day to go. And then I try to have one main quest that I wanna complete by the end of the day. Notion makes it really easy for me to make a checklist. So as I get things done, I can check them off the list and I bold the main quest so that every time I look at my list, I'm focusing on that one objective that's popping out as the thing to get done by the end of the day. Finally, I try to give myself about 10 minutes to just freely type whatever's in my mind. This is completely stream of consciousness. And sometimes it starts with, I can't think of anything to type right now, but I find that the words eventually start flowing and getting my thoughts onto screen helps me thinking about them in a more productive, effective way. A quote by Andrew Bosworth I like is that writing is thinking. And I find that this practice of getting myself to write the things that are in my head onto the screen helps prime me for the day of really thinking and starting to process information in a really great way. So that's journaling in Notion. Next, I take really good notes, especially meeting notes in Notion. Why? Because I'm an information worker and I'm exchanging ideas all day, often back to back to back to back to back in meetings. And if I have a great idea in the morning, there's no way that I'm going to remember it when I go back to it later on in the day, unless I write things down. So here's what I do. I have a database of meeting notes and I create a new one when I'm planning or joining a meeting. And in this template, I give the meeting a title and Notion will keep track of the date when I created the meeting so I can easily find it later by title and date. I have a section for an agenda and notes. If I'm running the meeting, I populate the agenda beforehand. And throughout the meeting, I jot down what resonates with me. Not everything needs to be recorded, just the things that light up my brain as something that's meaningful or important or a key decision. If anyone volunteers or gets assigned a task, I write it down in the next steps and action items section. And then after the meeting, I copy and paste the key outcomes and action items into a message to the group. And that creates social pressure to follow up on the things that we committed to, and away we go. Now, there are a few benefits to this practice. It helps me better understand things, even in the moment. Writing down what I hear people say, especially when they're listing them off really rapidly, lets me see their thoughts and visually organize them. And I find that when I 
say, hey, let me see if I'm understanding you, and then read them back what I wrote down, they often say, wow, you're saying it better than I even could have in the first place. Two, it helps me retain information. Again, writing is thinking, and so writing the thoughts down that resonate with me helps integrate them into my own thinking model so that when I repeat them later, it's coming from a place of well-organized thought and it feels more intentional. Three, it helps me express information more effectively. Notion lets me group my thoughts together by bringing all the notes of a particular topic back together or seeing trends across a lot of disparate pieces of information. So I can express thoughts that seem really obvious to me from my notes that my peers think is really profound. So that's taking better notes in Notion. Okay, finally, let's talk about how Notion might be the best way to power a website and blog. And that's because my website is like a calling card for my personality and my blog is a collection of my thoughts. And so since Notion is already where I capture so much of my thinking, it, turning it into a website is just a really natural next step. I don't have to stare at a blank page thinking about how I want to design it or what I want to write about because all that information is already right there in my second brain. So let's take a look. So Notion lets you share any page to the web which publishes it and gives you a link that you can share with anyone. This is actually how I published my 2023 objectives and key results. So you can use this to create an entire website with all the subpages within a main page. And you can even do this with databases. So it becomes really easy to create a blog as a database of posts. But the downside of this approach is that your URL looks really long and hard to remember. And that's where a site called Super comes in, which is a Notion-based website builder. You can sign up for it for free and point it to your published Notion page and it creates a website for you at an easy to remember address like ronforbes.super.site, which is what I have right here. It also comes with some cool ways to customize how the site looks and feels. But you might be saying, whoa, gronforbes.super.site still isn't very pro, which is fine because then for $12 a month, you can point it to a custom domain like gronforbes.com, which I plan to do very soon. For me, I think this is perfect because I can then start to think of my second brain as having an internal side, and that's my private Notion workspace, and having an external side, which is ronforbes.com. It's super easy to take my thoughts and ideas and publish them to the public because everything's in the same place. Place. I'm not doing a bunch of research on the web and then getting it into Notion and then writing a blog post in Google Docs and then setting up a website on Ghost. It's all just in Notion. And I'm finding that this is massively decreasing the friction that it takes to produce things because everything's all in one place. So that's how I'm using Notion to give me productivity superpowers. But before I go, I wanna share a bonus tip just in case you're thinking about starting to use Notion for your own life. And that's to just get started. One of Notion's biggest strengths is actually one of its biggest weaknesses in that it's so customizable that it can be intimidating to actually begin using it to organize your life. If you search on YouTube, you'll find tons of people sharing their Notion setups, which you can fall down this deep rabbit hole on just trying to find the perfect setup. And I find that that's an inhibitor to just getting started. So the thing is, everyone's brain is slightly different and that's what makes us human in the first place. So the way that I think about things probably isn't quite the way that you think about things. And so the way that I organize Notion isn't gonna be the right way for you to organize Notion. So resist the urge to feel like you need to find the perfect organizational system and copy it because one, that's probably not going to help you learn Notion in the best way. And two, that's probably not going to work as well for you as it did for its creator. So just get started and then learn to use Notion's more advanced capabilities as you identify the need for them. Remember, complexity is the enemy of execution. So don't get bogged down in all the custom customization at first, let those systems emerge organically. All right, well, that's all I've got for you today. And in future videos, I'll share more tutorials on how you can set Notion up to supercharge your life. If you got value out of this video, I would love if you could smash that like button. And if you wanna see more videos where we apply product thinking to live a better life, then subscribe to the channel. And before you go, I'd love to hear from you. So my question for the day is, are you using Notion? And if so, how's it going for you? And if not, how are you organizing the information in your life? Now, if you wanna see another way I use Notion, I actually used it to publish my 2023 objectives and key results, which you can see in this video right here. All right, until next time, love yourself, love those around you, peace.